What's going on everybody? Back again in the shop on the burnout truck. We are gonna pull the engine out and get it pulled apart and get it ready for a cam. Gonna get a cam coming here pretty soon. So uh, we also were looking at the engine mounts and we think we can flip them around and possibly slide it forward about an inch or inch and a half because the oil pan will allow us to do that. We also need to round out the tunnel uh, and bend over that pinch weld so we can gain access to being able to put bolts in the transmission. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with pulling this thing out. All right, so we've got the engine out sitting here. I think we're gonna go ahead and start tearing it down. The intake will come off. We won't end up using any of that. We're gonna go ahead and get the heads off. Just make sure everything looks good and there's nothing major wrong with it. Get the old cam out, look at cam bearings, look at the cam, make sure nothing looks chewed up, nothing went wrong with it at that point. And then start cleaning everything and getting it prepped for the new cam. <laughs> so we got the intake off. It's kind of cool. You guys can see where the injector actually helps clean the head right there. But uh, yeah, these ports are pretty nasty, so it's not going to hurt to get it pulled apart and clean it a little bit by any means. There's actually some leaves sitting on top of that valve, so that's cool. Looks like there's actually a bunch of leaves and crap kind of sitting in here, so who knows with that intake being off of it, the throttle body, probably a bunch of little crap got pushed down into the valves. All right, so got one head off, gonna work on the other one. Otherwise, there's definitely some crud down in cylinders, but maybe that's just sat there and got knocked around. But otherwise, the cylinders don't feel too bad, I don't think, yet. So definitely not a ridge up at the top. So go ahead and keep uh, working on it, cleaning it, and go from there. So catch you guys up. If you have not pulled apart an LS, I'll show you kind of what you gotta do. So pretty easy, uh, most LS intakes have an eight millimeter intake bolt. And then on the heads, you end up having three sets of bolts. The top here that you can see, which are these bolts. The middle here that go through the head. And then the bottom that are on the outside of the head here. So once you take the, all those off, uh, you can pop it out. But before you do that, when you have the head off to this point here. Uh, you just come through and again, eight millimeter bolts, pop all the rockers off, which allows you to pull out the push rods and hanger for the rocker arms. Kind of take a look at everything. This is the holders. The lifters are down behind this tray. So once you pull these trays out, you can get to the lifters. These bolts here are 15s, as well as these here. And then these here are eights. They go across the top. So. Pretty simple, and then if you're doing a cam swap, you have to move your way up to the water pump, get the water pump off, use a puller, get the balancer off, pull the front timing cover off, and then you can get into the timing chain and the cam. So we're gonna go ahead and work our way that direction. Best thing ever for pulling an engine part is an impact. Once you get them all broke loose, it makes it really easy. Now you pull apart a top end of an elevator. 40 minutes. Probably not even that. 40 minutes of like, you know, pulling it out and then setting it on a stand and unbolting everything. Once you pull out this little bolt here, you end up with the lifter trays out of it and you guys can see you can get to the lifters right there. Pop those out and it's uh, that easy. A lot of people just throw a cam in, run the stock lifters or replace them with what's an LS7 stock lifter. To me, the thing that's gonna take the most beating on this engine, revving it the way that it is at the valve train. So, Definitely gonna replace lifters, push rods, and all that stuff. One of the reasons for going to some new top-end components is for more reliability. Sending this thing at 7,000 plus RPMs for long periods of time where it's not designed to, uh, I would feel better being in it. Also traveling like 28 hours away from home to go run this thing, to get there to have a couple dollar lifter go out would be terrible. So definitely gonna try to Hopefully put the right parts in there that'll help it live without just overbuilding everything. Pro tip, put a screwdriver back on the bolts, hold the flywheel, if there is one, put your 
big ratchet here and get you the biggest cheater bar you can find. We use one about this big. And uh, loosen this thing up, back it out, and then use a pulley puller to pull that thing off. What I've used to pull multiple of these off is the Harbor Freight three jaw puller set. Hook it up like that. The truck makes it pretty easy. There's actually some pull tabs on here. I think some of the other ones are a little bit more of a pain, but this one looks like it's gonna be fairly easy. When you're lucky, you're lucky. Last uh, last thread and it popped right off. So go and get this timing cover off, which kind of sucks as I put that silicone. So you have to take these two bolts out of the pan right here. The timing cover will come off and we can get to the inside of the motor. So I'll just have to reseal this later. Well, now we're to the inside. Pop these three off, get the cam out of the way, slide this cam sprocket off, and then we should be able to get the cam out of it and take a look at it, make sure everything looks good, and then we should be good to go back in. I might end up ordering a new oil pump as well. There's something kind of weird with shimming it. I've never paid much attention with that, but I, I might get a new oil pump as well. Just kind of depends on how much I guess I want to invest into this thing, but as long as you don't send a bunch of crap through that, you can probably transfer it to the next engine as well. All right, so before we pull this off and pull the cam out, I wanted to keep it at top dead center, which is number one all the way up. If you guys can see it, hopefully there's a little dot right there on the lower, and then there's a dot right here on the upper. So now those are lined up. I know that when the new one goes back in, they were still in the same alignment. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this out. I need to pull the lifter still up. But if the lifters are still in this and you're trying to do a cam swap with the heads on it, if you just pull the rockers off, there's dowels in behind this plate. You could pop this plate off and slide wooden dowels. It's a certain size, you could probably find it on Google, in there, which will help push the lifters up out of the way. You can slide the cam out and slide a cam back in it. Pull the dowels, the lifters will drop back onto the cam, and then you can just do a swap without pulling all the heads off. All right, so I'm gonna start pulling the cam out. You just wanna be careful to not nick cam bearings. You just try to float it out of the engine and not like drag it across any of the bearings when you do this. All right, so newbie, I forgot to pull this cover off right here. Uh, you actually have to pull that off anyway to get, to allow the cam out. That's what actually sets the cam in there. So go ahead and pull that off. All right, so easy does it, all right, so easy. Even though you're trying to be easy, it still feels like a bowl in a china closet when you're pulling these things out. Should be the last one, hopefully. There it is, stock cams out. Take a look at it. Doesn't look like any of the lobes are too messed up. Got a little file of metal right there. But otherwise, the cam doesn't look too bad. That one looks like it maybe had a little heat in it at one point. Otherwise, looks all right. So that one's out. This thing's pretty much torn down. Just need to get some parts coming, then we can get a new cam in this thing. Well, there we go. Cam is out. Looking down at the bearings, you can see some brass in there from, I mean, it's a worn engine. One little nick in a cam bearing, which I'm not sure. It's kind of on an outer edge. I don't know if I did that or if it's been like that, it's hard to say. I put a cam back in there, spun it around and everything feels okay with it. Got everything out. I'm um, looking at all the lifters, everything looks pretty good, nothing looks like it was uh, too hurt before it came out, everything's looking pretty decent, so uh, all the cylinders look really good, this cylinder here has a little bit of vertical hatching, like scratches in it, uh, you can't even fill them, but you can kind of see them, otherwise that's how you tear down uh, LS in an evening, I guess, so we're going to go ahead and end this one here. Thanks everybody for watching again. More to come on the LS, Burnout, S10, Bernie, whatever you want to call it, truck. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.